You know, I've been noticing lately that I'm changing. Slowly but surely, strange things are happening. (laughs) Today, we're talking all about the interesting things that happen when you hit midlife. You know, uh, when your body starts playing tricks on you and you're suddenly obsessed with things like kitchen renovations and knee braces. Mm Mm-hmm. I know you know what I'm talking about, but let's start with the obvious, the midlife body. Okay, one minute, you're totally rocking those jeans, and the next you're wondering why your waistline has become like an uninvited guest to the party. Don't even get me started on menopause. Actually, wait a minute. Yeah, let's talk about it. Because the hot flashes, mood swings, insomnia, and... Those are the real deal. I thought I was prepared for midlife, but then my body was like, girl, hold my wine. (laughs) Like, what? Remember when you could stay up late, eat all the things, and then just bounce back the next day? (laughs) Yeah, me neither. It seems like so far long ago. Now I'll eat like one slice of pizza, and it's even, you know, like cauliflower crust pizza, and my body be like, Girl, we're bloating for 72 hours. (laughs) Just this week, out of nowhere, my knees told me that I needed to go up the stairs sideways to avoid crazy knee pain that came out of nowhere. And then today, just gone. Like, what the actual heck? So, like, I'm laughing because these things are really funny. And I'm also laughing because as I say them, I know if you're in midlife, you're like, oh, me too. Like, hashtag relatable. So I feel like at this point, it's laugh or cry. So let's laugh about this because I know when I talk to other midlife women about what's going on, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they can relate. It's just that we haven't been talking about it. It's like all these changes are happening and I feel like, this is familiar. Where do I know this from? Damn, it's my mom. Like all the things that I noticed about my mom or we used to make fun of her because of all these things that she did. These are the things that I'm doing now. These are the midlife things. And I am turning into my mom. I can see it happening. Like why Why is this person so familiar to me? Why is, are these things so familiar to me? <laughs> because I saw my mom do them. But there's so many things like our just our physical body changes. It's insane. What about haircuts? When did we all collectively decide that midlife means, hey, it's time for a major hair transformation. And suddenly we're debating whether we should chop it all off or embrace the grays like a queen. But here's the kicker. The hair is just a metaphor for life. Should we keep everything same, same? I guess it's a metaphor for midlife, you know, like keep it same, same. Or should we throw caution into the wind and be moms gone wild? It's about rediscovering who we are in this phase of life. And hair is an easy one to do because it'll grow back. The other day I walked into the salon thinking, Oh, maybe a trim. And I walked out with like a new short, sassy cut, spring in my step, totally rocking the latest version of my badass midlife self. Like a good haircut will do that for you. Like at what point do you decide to go from having long hair to short hair? I, before my last trip, I cut it short, like really short. Like she went shorter than I wanted her to go. But it grew, grew back. But it, that was the change where I cut my hair short. Because as women, we totally identify with who we are as a person in this world with our hair. And so it took a while for me to get used to this new version of me. But I did like it. And I noticed it was really strange that I got lots of compliments on it from men. And men normally would never compliment your hair or I've never had men compliment my hair, but they really were like, oh, I love your haircut. 
And I didn't really think it was, you know, that noticeable or different or whatever, but it was because people are like, oh, you cut your hair short. I'm like, yeah, I guess I did cut my hair short or my hairdresser cut my hair short and I like it. So when I go back, I will cut it short again. I get my hair cut maybe twice a year because it's super simple and I'm not a big hair person, but I like the short sassy cut. But it's hard to do because every time I would go into the hairdresser, I would be like, today's the day I'm going to get a cut, like different short, you know, like people would be like, oh, who are you? Different short. And I could never do that. I still can't. I'm just too chicken. I'm too chicken. We really identify with who we are with our hair, but you can see that when women get their, get a different hairstyle. That's when they're just embracing the new version of themselves. And it's actually been shown that when women come out of the hairdresser, the salon, they feel more confident. They feel better about the way they look. Of course, though, we can never recreate that. It's always funny when I get my hair cut, my hairdresser, she's like, what are your plans for today? And I never noticed that hairdressers always ask this. I'm like, why do they? Well, I'm thinking now, why do they always ask that? I don't, I know now because it's like, your hair looks so good. You need to go out and do stuff and show this hair off. Like you should make a haircut appointment on the days where you have a date or you have a function to go to or an event so that your hair is done. And because we know you won't wash it for a day or two because you're holding on to what the hairdresser did. And then the day you wash it, it'll never be able to recreate what they did. So yeah, make the fun party plans. So book your haircut on a Friday or a Saturday or something like that (laughs) and take advantage, full advantage of having the fabulous hair. Even other things like, I don't know about you, but suddenly I'm all about house renovations. What? Like forget vacations. Give me a new kitchen backsplash and I am living the life, right? It is so crazy. It's like midlife hits you and you start thinking, this house needs a facelift, just like me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But it's been, you know, a long time coming and perhaps it's wishful thinking, but maybe, just maybe, it's finally safe to actually paint the walls white and cover up all those grimy little fingerprints from the boys, you know, when they walk down the stairs, they just run their hands down the walls with every step. And I have hopes that maybe they just, maybe they won't have to like touch the top of every doorway as they walk through it or spill a drink everywhere they go or spill every single drink that they've ever had. And it's funny, it kind of oh makes me a little bit sad when I say this because I like I've never... No, I would paint my walls every once in a while, like a room here or a room there when I'm changing it, like going from the bedrooms that were blue, like bright blue for little kids now to like a nice mature gray for the kids. But I never really had a thought of painting the main walls because kids just, you know, put their hands and fingers on on everything and then... My thinking was, I'm just going to have to paint it again in a year. But now I'm thinking, yeah, these kids, I think that they get it. I think they'll keep their mud hooks off the wall. As my dad used to say, get your mud hooks off the wall. But as I was telling you about what they do, it's like, oh, my heart felt, you know, full. Because now they don't have to jump to touch the, (laughs) the top of a doorway. They just reach up and touch it. And it's funny because actually in my bedroom, you can, if you're watching this, you can see the door behind me. There's just literally like fingerprints on that door from them just touching it every time they go through it. And I also have, as I prepare to paint my house, I have, I have the marks of their heights as they were growing up. And you know, I'll never paint over that. That will stay forever. It's like, oh, They were so small and now they're so big. And also I used to, like when I first moved into this house 20 whatever years ago, I loved color. I hated color. I hated white walls, hated, hated, hated. 
I thought it felt like a institution. And I colored my walls like aubergine, which means purple. And my kitchen was blue and now it's brown. And I just painted all the walls. I didn't even have a white wall left in my house because I was like, ooh, how boring. And now, ladies, like what the actual heck? I am having my house painted, which is the first time ever. And I'm doing the walls. It's called decorator white, which means it has a teeny bit of gray in it. And I'm like, who am I? Never in a million years ever would I have thought that I would be painting my walls technically white. That's what happens when you're in mid in midlife. You change, things change. And it's okay. Like my, you know, Pinterest board is now full of tiles, countertops, and open concept living spaces. When did I become obsessed with minimalistic chic? Like who am I? I'll tell you when, right around the time we started waking up with new back pains for no reason, right? It's like all these things are happening and they're accumulating. Like they're sneaky. They are sneaky things. Raise your hand if you suddenly care way too much about gardening, right? If you follow me, you know I'm obsessed. Yeah, I see you being obsessed with gardening. I went from not knowing a tulip from a daisy to talking about soil pH, like I'm auditioning for HGTV or something. Don't even get me started on how obsessed I am with deadheading plants. That used to be a reason why I wouldn't buy plants. I'm like, that's a lot of work. And yesterday I spent an hour sitting on the ground deadheading this chrysanthemum because I'm thinking, oh, it's going to grow more flowers. What, what the heck? Who am I? One day I'm binge watching Netflix and the next I'm comparing like heirloom tomato varieties like it's a sport. Why do we all become amateur gardeners in midlife? right? Is it just me or do those zucchini plants feel like a metaphor for life? I've named all my plants in my house and it takes me like 10 minutes to walk to my front door because I've totally did this, planted all of these. I had a thing. I created this boring front walkway into this glorious, magical wonderland and it literally takes me 10 minutes to walk from my car to my front door which is just a like a couple of steps <laughs> because I have to take the time to admire each plant and be ooh ah and tell them how beautiful they are and deadhead anything that needs to be deadheaded and water anything that needs to be watered it's insane I couldn't grow anything I would kill everything and my mom is like the best gardener and she kept giving me plants and I kept killing them I'm like I just can't and then all of a sudden I woke up obsessed with plants and flowers like obsessed and one of the things we used to do is make fun of my mom for taking pictures of flowers and there used to be this commercial on tv uh, for Kodiak film some kind of film And it would be, this person would take pictures of everything and then their hat fell off and they would take a picture of their hat. They'd be like, oops, dropped my hat and take 20 pictures of their hat. And every time my mom would take a picture of a flower, we'd be like, oops, dropped my hat. And we would totally mock her and make fun of her. And now that's me. That's what I'm doing. I'm thinking like, did I just replace my kids with plants? like something that needs all of my love and attention to stay alive? I think so. And Coco and Fuego and Zuli, Zulu, they don't think I'm crazy. They actually love the new me because they get all of this love and attention every day. I talk to these plants. I water them. I just touch them. I give them love. I'm like, hello, Zulu, how are you today? Like in awe of how much it's grown from yesterday. I know this is almost too much, but I'm telling you just because I've noticed all these changes about myself and I feel confident that you too are experiencing these kind of changes. Maybe it's not 
you know, your body or your hair or renovations in your house or becoming a professional gardener out of nowhere. Maybe it's something else for you. I wonder what it is. And I wonder how funny it is when you sit back and look at who you've become. Is it your mother? Like, have you become your mother? Or do you, is it familiar what you're seeing and what you're doing and thinking? But beyond the body changes, the haircuts, the house makeovers, midlife is the perfect time for self-reinvention, self-actualization. It's like we've spent years being everything to everyone, just doing all the things, putting everybody else first. And now we get to be ourselves again. But even, I want to offer up even more than that. Like, who do we want to be now? We don't have to be who we were because we're different people now. Like, motherhood changes you. So who do we want to be? Maybe it's like you want to have a new hobby or a total, complete career change. Or finally saying yes to the things that we've always wanted to do. This is the moment right now. This is it. Midlife is like, okay, girl, the kids are older. Career's in motion. It's finally time to think about you. I don't know about you, but I I got this whole, I get to be the star of my own show vibe. It's like really working for me. Like, I love it. What, who do I want to be today? What do I want to create today? How do I want to show up for myself today? Because if we, anything is possible. That's why I get so excited. We Usually people just get so stuck in re- repeating the same old, same old what was. Like we're creating our future from our past. And that just means the more of what you, the more of the same, basically. I'm like, no, if anything was possible, because it is, who would you be? What do you want to create for yourself? So whether you're knee deep in a bathroom renovation, experimenting with new hair colors or planning your dream garden. Remember this, midlife is a wild ride, but it's also the best ride. It's the best time of your life. This is where we get to let go of what doesn't serve us and fully embrace the amazing women we are now becoming, that we are creating, this life we are creating for ourselves. All bets are off, ladies. Let's shoot for the stars. And speaking of reinventing your midlife self, this week is the last Eat More, Lose Weight in Midlife 5-Day Challenge for 2024. It's not too late to join. I'll put the link in the show notes. I want to see you in there and we can do this together. All the stuff we talked about today, the 5-Day Challenge, it will help you with all of this. It'll make sense of all of it. Thank you for listening. Always, always, always love yourself first and have an amazing day.